Those women of the vaudeville blues looks at the world of Capone through the eyes of the ladies who carved a niche in the history of American music. At a time when gangsters were shooting their way through the Windy City, when Dillinger got his outside the bioscope, and that famous garage floor was carpeted with the remains of the Moran gang, something wonderful was happening in the dives and speakeasies of that much maligned metropolis. Through the smoke and above the noise of a generation drowning itself in bathtub gin, the soaring voices of women like Bessie Smith and Victoria Spivey were rising high above the cold streets of Chicago. Fusing together elements of jazz, folk music, and the hard times they knew only too well, they created an art form which has traveled across the globe and expresses emotions which are universally understood. Featuring Chicago in Marilyn Middleton Pollock and the piano of ace keyboard man Andy Thorburn, Danny Kyle's play tells the story of 17 of the women who made those vaudeville blues a legend. It's about the women that came to Chicago with, against the three prejudices. They were illegitimate, they were black, and they were women. So there were three prejudices against them, and they fought. Some of them disappeared, you'll hear that in the play, and some of them made it to the top, you know. What was life like for them in that period? I mean, as much as we can tell now. The hard and tough ones survived, they made it. Uh, there's, a, there's actually a woman at Helen Gross in the play who disappears totally, with her great stardom on her shoulders and disappears totally. Um, they made it because they were tough and resilient and held on. You know? How did the show come about? Well, it was Marlon and I just talking of a mutual love for the vaudeville blues, for the early Chicago blues, plus the fact my father spent 11 years in Chicago during Prohibition, and a lot of the tales in the play are actually from my father and Marlon's own experiences in Chicago talking to people. But you've been involved in that particular music scene for a long time, so where did that interest come from? Well, as I say, my dad mainly, he brought the old 70s back from his, his sojourn in Chicago, and Marlon has got, now got the cassette and tape out of the old songs back again, so it's a full circle. Now, you mentioned Marilyn, in fact, in my opinion, very well served there, because uh, she's perhaps the most authentic blues singer that I've heard in a long time. She's great, and, and she's a great actress, too, in the play. She's super. Now, what relevance, though, does this music have there? You and I may love it deeply, but does it mean anything to the young people? When people hear Marlon, that will be back. Well, I can kick my leg out, and you ought to see me do the and hear Marilyn at the Art Centre in Aberdeen on Saturday night. Well, quick closing headline.